Hello there, YouTube. This is Wheelchair21 of Hirotaku coming at you with another rolling review. Today's rolling review is a Bandai Collector Shop exclusive, a Tamashii Web Shop exclusive, Figuarts Blue Beat. Yep, brown box says it all. Bandai Collector Shop Blue Beat. Got this with Rider Proxy, who is the uh, official middleman service of Hirotaku. And I'm glad I made this purchase with her. Let's get down to the actual figure at hand. First off, the interior box showcasing Juko B Fighter Blue B is amazing. This figure art box just looks incredible. I love the details. I love how it captures the figure. I really just like the front design and the back design. Really just brings back memories. And I automatically just am in awe just by seeing the official, you know, product images and the box art, you can already tell this is going to be one crazy ass figure. Now the contents of the box and of the figure show that it comes with an input gun, the actual stinger blade and the stinger drill, as well as three pairs of additional hands, so six hands in total, plus an extra cover for your stinger weapons. Obviously, one can automatically see from the box and from the figure itself, yes, this is the blue beetle Borg, the blue stinger Borg. But I bought it because of both reasons. As a metal hero, and as the Beetleborg itself. Yes. Yes, indeedy. Let's go into the awesome points of articulation of this figure, and the awesome accessories at hand. Blue Beat, or the Blue Stingerborg, is, right off the bat, an amazing figure. It is one of the most beautiful figure arts I own. It really goes good with capturing the actual suit and the character. Just by the designs and the details alone, when looking at it close up, showing all the grain and metallic like circuitry, all I can say is this one rivals that of anything in the Gaim line. The Gaim line is some of the most beautiful figure arts I own, and this one just kind of comes out and knocks them out of the park. I mean, this is just beautiful. The legs, really great feature. The chest paneling, really great. Just the belt, the face itself. All of this is immensely magnificent. Especially the fact that how they made this blue paint shimmer and gleam, it really makes you think that they really kind of chromed out the figure. Or at least the metallic paint used really gives you a good uh, presentation of the colors that the suit possessed. I mean, the su suits were chromed the hell out, and the chest piece looked like, you know, base, basic plastic and plaster, but damn, these things just are marvelous, like the figures themselves. I mean, I know that with this being the first of the releases, Black Beat, uh, G-Stag, and Rettle will be some of the most best figures ever made by Tamashi. I really gotta say... Being an exclusive really helps the details and the features. It's just disappointing that not many people will have the pleasure in owning this figure. Because of it being a metal hero, its hips are actually redesigned to actually jar out a bit to give it still the regular straight-up leg features of a normal human to actually move and walk. Its knee joints still stain. Its ankle joints, though, now it's not made of metal, but it captures the original type of a Tamashii product, like the very early stages of the very first figure arts on how the ankle joint is made. So it's pretty cool that it's a plastic joint, but it captures everything that the old die-cast foot and ankle joints used to be. The waist joint is kind of weird and abstract, especially because of how the belt is molded on. It kind of makes it hard to just pose the figure in general. The shoulders, some of the best I've seen thus far as well as the bicep joints, really great. Elbow joints, really sturdy, pretty decent. Wrist joints, good 360 swivel. Can't really argue with that. And the head, really great. Good free range of motion, especially for how it's designed, especially having the collar system built into the armor. Just like it, love it overall. Really on par really decent, some of the best construction of a figure I've ever owned. 
especially the fact that its holster built into the thigh actually can hold your input magnum, which actually captures everything that the American toy wasn't actually silver and has beautiful black paint and nice blue buttons. Now you can't really press the buttons since they're actually painted on, but still really great and actually fits right nice and snug into the holster. Pretty good, pretty awesome, pretty bitchin'. Now, the Stinger weapon, which pretty much all three have a base holster for, but different attachments to, to use, is a pretty cool uh, accessory piece or weapon in general for a figure art thus far. It actually has a movable handle joint, swivel joint. It actually goes back and forth, which is great. And the way that these weapons are made actually captures what it is in the show. It spins and it rotates. You can turn it on an angle as such. And they unplug almost like the old 90s toys. Just It's a little bit tighter and a little bit more snug when rotating it. So be very careful. Um, unlike the 90s toys, it actually can capture. Yes, it can. Oh, if I get it to work right. Like the 90s toys, it actually can capture the actual generator system, which has two replaceable pieces where you take this part off and replace it with its sibling, and it will latch on to here to show it opened up when it's actually using its finishing attack or when you're using the stinger drill. The stinger drill option is actually a pretty cool feature because it actually connects and opens up just like the deluxe toy could. Like the deluxe toy, once putting in the right piece, put that away and we'll look at the drill. The drill has pretty cool design and actually has, like I said, the ability to open up like it did to latch around the actual weapon. Uh, the drill does not spin. It's one solid piece, but it actually has the nice metallic gleam, the nice uh, red and black stripes around the base of each coil of drill, and the tip is actually quite pointy. Pretty damn good. I, I'm afraid it might actually break. It might get brittle and fall apart. But, like I said, it replaces and it locks right into place. Just like the deluxe toy. Pretty impressive. Pretty cool. And it is one of the most heftiest dang huge-ass weapons to date, I think, in the figure arts line. It's one of the biggest, I should say, just by basic bulk. I mean, the rod to rod form is probably one of the longest, but this is one of the bulkiest SOBs ever for just a one-handed weapon. Like I said, there's the Reka, the rod form, big ones, but this is this really takes the cake for just a one-armed weapon, I believe. And here we come to the final evaluation. This Tamashi Web Shop exclusive is worth it to only those that care for, I would say, Big Bad Beetleborgs and Juco B Fighter. If you only care for one, as an American fan, as an international fan, don't go out and get this figure. If you live internationally, this is going to be hard. It is a web shop. You will need to go through people like Rider Proxy, uh, other middlemen, or actual online services that provide you the ability to get these figures. Because you actually have to order them in through, you know, Bandai's Japanese website. They have to actually ship to a Japanese address, and then they have to ship to you. That's the whole thing about middlemaning service. That's the whole thing about uh, web shops that actually online retailers that actually host this thing. And you actually will have to spend a little bit more than the base figure. Normal figures only sell for $30, $40, or $50. But something like this goes for like 60 or more. And I gotta say now, I'm glad I got it for somewhat of a deal. I mean, Rider Proxy is very affordable. She is a very good middleman service. So, I can't really complain. Uh, I've always dealt with her. She's probably the only middleman I've known of before even Hiro Taku. Um, so, I'm glad I got this. I can say I enjoy it. I enjoy it for being a Beetleborg. I enjoy it for being Jugo B Fighter. I don't care which one it is. I love the articulation, I love the details, I love Metal Heroes in general. They have some of the best designs in Toku. And I'm glad that something from my childhood and from my early teens when I discovered Juko B Fighter is now something I can own. I love the figure, it's just something that I really enjoy. It's a, a character, it's a design that just makes me happy. And 
I feel like if you really want to go the extra mile for an international fan, do it. It, it. It's something you will not regret owning. This is one of the few figures you will not regret out of all f SHF products or Tamashii uh, Nations products. I enjoy it. I'm glad I got it. I, I'm i just sad that people who are Beetleworks fans here in the States won't have a good chance of getting this figure because it's an exclusive and because Bluefin Tamashii can't really how I should say, seal the deal, get the deal done, to get certain items because of licensing rights. It's a shame. It's really honestly a shame, and it sucks. I really feel bad for those who, you know, can't get a middleman or don't want to pay the price. Because this is something, I can admit, you're missing out on. But I'm not telling you to go out and throw your money away just for a single figure. There's more... More, the, more to life than this. I'm just glad I had the money at the time and I could get a hold of Rider Proxy and get an order made. Anyways, like I said, you could either get it with Rider Proxy or you could have ordered it from CS Toys Japan because they actually had orders open for it. Other places have it. Uh, you can always contact middlemen because they maybe can help you get it off of Yahoo Japan auctions or if you have a good friend in Japan because lately, if it isn't from Rider Proxy, it's from a good... A, a personally good friend of mine who's actually over there right now in Japan able to get these for me. So I thank him too for helping hooking me up with other releases that I'm gonna have for future reviews. Anyways, you can find this review here on my channel or at Hirotaku.com. You can follow me on Twitter, follow Hirotaku on Twitter, like Hirotaku on Facebook, check me out on Instagram where you can see sneak peeks at upcoming reviews and actually know when upcoming reviews will be listed. Anyways, we'll see you next time with another rolling review, Doyle's DVDs, card game shenanigans, vlog slash unboxings. See you next time, YouTube. Hope you enjoy. Whatever. I'm out.